सो वेलकम टू दिस सिक्स लेक्चर ऑन स्टैटिक्स एम ई वन जीरो सिक्स एंड इन इन द सीरीज ऑफ दीज लेक्चर्स वी वर प्रीवियसली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द फ्रिक्शन फोर्स एंड वी डिस्कस अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ फ्रिक्शन फ्रिक्शन प्रॉब्लम्स एंड सो टूडे वी विल गोइंग टू सॉल्व सम प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन फ्रिक्शन सो दिस a uh, problem shown here is example is 8-1 of your textbook rc hibler 12th edition and uh, uh, in this problem uh, we are given a uniform crate that has a mass of 20 kg and this force is applied at this point which is 80 newton this is an external load that is given to you Uh, and we need to determine that whether this crate under the action of the supplied force uh, will remain in equilibrium or not and the static the coefficient of static friction is defined between the crate and this floor so since we need to determine that whether this uh, this body will remain in equilibrium or not uh, we have to first draw its free body diagram okay so we have also noticed that uh, in this problem the dimensions of the rigid body is given to us uh, this crate has a dimension of 0.8 meters by 0.4 meters and so this means that the center of gravity of this uh, uh, crate is defined at 0.2 meters in the vertical direction and 0.4 meters in the horizontal direction and at this point this very point which is the center of gravity the weight of the box will going to act and this weight of the box is uh, 20 into 9.81 which is 196.2 newtons so this weight is applied at the center of gravity of this box that is Uh, 0.2 meters vertical and 0.4 meters horizontal, and there is an external load of 50 newton which makes an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal as you can see. So you have to show this force as well. And then since the dimensions of the crate are specified to us, we will going to uh, show the normal reaction at a distance x from the center of gravity. and this is because uh, we realize that since the dimensions are given uh, we need to check the condition for tipping as well and so therefore this normal reaction has to be shown at a distance x and when we we are going to check the condition for tipping we are going to estimate this uh, this x so now uh, let's look at the observations that we can make from from this data okay uh, some very obvious observations we can make for example that there is no clear indication of impending motion in the given in, in this problem so this means that uh, we are not sure uh, i'm sorry so we are we, we we cannot say that uh, the point of contact of this body okay lies at the point of impending motion because there is no indication of impending motion in this problem and this is a very important point to be noted this problem is 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 hasn't actually uh, stated that this that the that the crate is about to slip or it is at on verge of slipping nothing like that it only ask us to find out whether it remains in equilibrium or not so this means that we have to assume that uh, this this crate will going to remain in this region which is the no motion region or in other words we assume that this crate under the action of uh, the supplied force uh, will going to remain in the no motion zone and the friction force this friction force that is developed at the point of contact uh, will be less than the maximum value of friction force and we know that the maximum value of friction force is mu times n 
so at this point which is the which is the impending motion point this point uh, we know that the friction force is mu times n and this is the maximum friction force so this is the maximum value of friction force so there is no uh, indication of the impending motion given in this problem okay we are required to test or verify that whether this body will remain in equilibrium or not but there is no clear indication of the uh, impending motion in it so the second point to note is that uh, uh, external load is given to us okay it is it is not an unknown but it is given to us dimensions are given therefore we must check for tipping we made this uh, clear in the beginning and now let's count the number of unknowns so we have nc which is which is an unknown force we have f which is unknown force and we have x which is unknown dimension so we have three unknowns here okay nc f and x and since this uh, crate is is just a single rigid body it has no connected members okay then for a single rigid body we have only three equilibrium equations submission fx submission fy and submission of moment and so we see that we have three unknowns and we have three equilibrium equations so this is a type 1 problem we immediately uh, come across Uh, the knowledge that it's a type one problem, and we cannot use f equals to mu n during our solution. So this equation we cannot use in our solution. Then how we will be solving this question? We will be solving this question by just using the equilibrium equations. So by using the equilibrium equations, we will calculate this this force f, this n c, and this x, and then. in the end just to verify our assumption of a static equilibrium we will going to calculate the maximum value of friction force and we will going to compare this maximum value of friction force with our calculated value of friction force this is an essential part of type 1 problem we have to perform this step in the end so let's apply the equations of equilibrium uh, we know that Uh, if we will use submission fx okay we will going to get an equation for f and if we will going to use a submission of fy we will going to get an equation for nc and that is what we have done here okay so this is the horizontal component of the applied force and this is the vertical component of the applied force right so this vertical component you can call it py if you want and this horizontal component you can you can call it px and so px will be equal to p cos of 30 and py will be equal to p sin of 30 and it is acting in the downward direction and this px is acting in the positive x direction we we have taken this this axis to be positive x axis so this is positive x axis and this is positive y axis and therefore this py is negative and this px is positive so let's uh, apply the equation of uh, equilibrium submission fx equals to 0 and this will going to give us 80 cos 30 minus f equals to 0 so this is acting in the reverse direction because you see that this this uh, force applied force has a tendency of moving this block in this direction so this is actually the direction of motion
okay this uh, this applied force p tends to move this crate in this direction so therefore we know that the force of friction will always going to act in the reverse direction of the motion it, it, it has to oppose the direction of motion so this will be in the negative x axis and this is parallel or tangent to the uh, interface okay this is really tangent and parallel to the interface as we have learned previously so at cos 30 minus f equals to 0 and this gives us directly the value of friction force in this problem that is 69.28 newtons so this friction force uh, by using the equations of equilibrium comes out to be 69.28 newton similarly if you will use submission fy equals to 0 then this nc will be positive acting upward this py will be negative uh, 80 sine of 30 so there is a negative sign here and this weight weight of the crate which is 20 times 9.81 is 196.2 uh, it is also acting in the downward direction so this is negative and this equation can uh, readily give you the value of nc which is 236.2 newton in this problem so just by using the equations of equilibrium please note down that i haven't used this equation yet we haven't used this equation in our solution okay because it is not allowed it's a type 1 problem for type 1 problem we cannot use this equation during our solution so these values of f and nc are totally calculated from the equations of equilibrium nothing else but we have f we have nc we still don't have the value of x so let's cal calculate the value of x by using the equation of movement because we know that uh, there is one more equation left for equilibrium and that is the summation of movement so As soon as we will going to use the equation of movement, we can also check the condition for tipping. That whether this crate under the action of this force will going to uh, roll over or tip over from the surface or not. So for that we need to calculate this value of x. In order to check for tipping, we need to calculate the value of x. So let's sum the moments about point O. This is point O. In our free body diagram and we are summing moment about this point O so you see that uh, this F will not going to create any moment about point O because its line of action is passing from O similarly this weight will not going to create any moment about point O because its line of action is passing from point O so only this a normal reaction will going to create moment about point O and of course the horizontal and vertical component of this external force will going to create moment about point O so this was remember this was PY this is going to create moment and we have this one as well and the horizontal component of PX this will also going to create moment about point O because the line of action uh, is not passing from point O so so these will going to participate in the equation of moment so let's sum the moment about point O okay first of all simply this NC is calculating a, a anti-clockwise moment about point O and according to my sign convention which is arbitrary I have taken this time anti-clockwise moment as positive so this NC is creating moment about point O which is anti-clockwise that that is why it is positive here okay so NC times X its moment arm is X measured from O and similarly you see that uh, uh, this uh, PY which is 80 sine of 30 a, is having a moment arm from point O which is 0.4 meters and this is also anti-clockwise so this is positive 80 sine 30 into 0.4 okay. so just recall that uh, the method that I told you for calculating the rotational sense of the moment is that you you draw a position vector or the moment arm vector originating from the point 
where you want to calculate the moment and this, then just join the tail of this course tail of this component with the tail of this uh, moment arm vector and then curl your draw a curl from starting from this moment arm vector r to this load py and this you can do it do it in your mind just join the tails by preserving the direction of the force py so this is an anti clockwise moment and that is why it is positive 80 sin 30 into 0.4 similarly uh, you can calculate the moment of px about 0 0.0 and that is clockwise so that is why it is negative so 80 cos of 30 into 0 0.2 the moment arm for px measured from 0.0 is 0 0.2 0 0.2 meters so this is clockwise therefore it is negative and by solving this equation of moment you can get the value of x so x comes out to be minus 0 0.00908 now this minus sign is indicating that actually uh, this nc is not located on the right hand side of o but it is located at the left hand side of o just somewhere here this negative sign is telling us this story and this is the value of x so it is on the left hand side of point o this negative sign is telling us this and this is equal to 9.08 millimeters which is obviously very small compared to 0.4 meter so this means that tipping will not going to take place under this condition now remember that for tipping this the value of x must be at least equal to 0.4 or greater than 0.4 if this crate would have been tipping under this action under the action of this force then the value of x would have come come out to be greater than 0.4 okay now since this is less than 0.4 tipping will not going to initiate and we say that uh, tipping of this crate will not going to take place under the under the present scenario so the second important thing is that if tipping will not going to take place then uh, slipping might take place this is the second condition that we have to check now because in type 1 problem you either have to prove that slipping will is not going to take place or you have to prove that tipping is not going to take place in this problem we have uh, had to check both the conditions because uh, the dimensions were also specified and if dimensions are given then we know that we must check the condition for tipping so we have checked the condition for tipping and since x comes out to be less than 0.4 meters we say that tipping will not going to take place so let's uh, now uh, check the condition for slipping so for slipping we just need to apply the check because we have already calculated the value of f and the value of nc so we know that the coefficient of a static friction is 0.3 so the maximum value of friction at at this interface will be equal to mu times nc so mu times nc means the maximum value of friction force must be equal to mu times nc and so mu times nc is 0 0.3 into nc we have already calculated the value of nc 236.2 this comes out to be 70.86 newton so the maximum value of friction force acting at this interface is 70.86 newton and we see that our calculated value of friction force from equilibrium equation comes out to be 69.28 newton only so this means that our calculated value is less than the maximum value of friction that is acting at the interface and so this means that the value of f that we have calculated is basically below this line okay below this line which is the uh, limiting line for impending motion so this means that since our value of friction force is less than this value 
this maximum value therefore slipping will not going to take place and uh, our body is truly in the no motion zone that is it is in complete equilibrium so only after checking this condition of slipping and tipping you are in in this position to state your final result and you can say that therefore it can be finally concluded that the crate will obviously remain in equilibrium why because no tipping is taking place we have proved it from our calculations and no slipping is taking place this is also we have proved from our calculations but note that during the solution during this entire solution we haven't actually used uh, the formula f equals to mu n anywhere this was the key so in type 1 problems you don't have to use f equals to mu n during your solution you only have to use equations of equilibrium calculate the value of friction force the normal reaction and other unknowns and then uh, check for slipping uh, okay compare the calculated value of your friction force with the maximum value of friction force acting at that point uh, check the condition for slipping and then check the condition for tipping if if uh, the situation demands okay so this this is how you solve uh, type 1 problems okay, you first have to draw the free body diagram you and then you have to you know look at few conditions for example if there is no clear indication of the motion given to you uh, the load is specified to you the dimensions are known then you you, you count the a number of unknowns you count the equilibrium equations for the, for the body and then you finally conclude that which type of problem is this so in this problem just uh, if we take a re recap we know that there is no clear indication no clear indication of motion was given the external load was given dimensions were given therefore we we had this uh, in our mind that we need to check the uh, condition for tipping as we proceed on and then we counted the unknowns uh, we, we counted them to be three and then we uh, figured out the equilibrium equations it was a single rigid body so only three equilibrium equations therefore we immediately realized that we have three unknowns and three equilibrium equations this is a type one problem so we cannot use f equals to mu n during our solution and we haven't used f equals to mu n in our solution just only in the end to cut to check the condition for slipping we have calculated the maximum value of friction force by using mu n and then we then we compared this value with our calculated value of friction force and ends the problem so this is how you solve type 1 problem let's move on to the second problem and in this problem we have to find out the value of theta for which member a b slips at both the ends the weight of the member is 100 newton now if you if you compare if you read the question and if you compare this question with this uh, question that we did previously okay in this question there was no uh, condition for uh, slipping defined clearly okay it was not mentioned at all but in this problem they are clearly mentioning that we have to find the value of theta for which member a b slips this means that they are saying that this bar a b this rod should slip at point b and point a simultaneously at both the ends slips at both the ends and the weight of the member is 100 newton it is given the length of the rod is 4 meter so this means that the weight will going to act at 2 meters from either side because it's a rod it's a one dimensional uh, entity and and its uh, center of gravity will lie at half of its length 2 meters so, uh, so by reading this question, uh, you can say that the condition of motion is specified to us. It is uh, slipping at both the ends. So this means that both these points A and point B are basically at the impending motion point here. They are just here on verge of slipping. In type 1 problem, this condition was not at all mentioned. 
and we assume the body to be in no motion zone. That is, we assume that the friction force acting at the interface is smaller than this maximum value of friction force and it comes out to be smaller. You see, it comes out to be smaller. This is the friction force that we calculated and this is the friction maximum friction force. So it was a smaller. So therefore, you see, in this case, both these points are at impending motion point because they are slipping simultaneously at both the ends. So, so we are here. In this problem, we are standing here on this point. And at this point, we know the friction force is maximum. We know that the friction force here is maximum. And what is the maximum value of friction force? It is mu times n. So let's draw the free body diagram. Okay, if this rod will going to slip under its own weight, this point B will going to move in the downward direction. And so therefore the friction force at B is acting upward. And it is in contact with the wall, so there is a normal reaction and B. And while this point will move down, this point A will going to move in the backward direction. And so therefore the friction force at point A is in the positive x direction. And this rod is making a contact with the ground so there is a normal reaction at point A. The coefficient of static friction at point A is 0.3. The coefficient of static friction at point B is 0.4. The weight of the rod is 100 Newton which is acting at 2 meters. So I have used W equals to 100 Newton at 2 meters, which, which is the center of gravity of this rod. And so this theta is unknown to me. So therefore, if this is 2 meters, okay, and this is theta, then this is 2 cos of theta. And if this is 4 meters, and this is theta, then this dimension is 4 cos of theta. Okay, so this means that this is 2 cos of theta, and this is 2 cos of theta. And from this triangle, 4 meters and theta, this dimension, this length is 4 sine theta. So this is how I draw the free body diagram. Okay, please note that again you have to show the direction of friction force uh, accurately. So I realized that if this is the weight of the uh, object, 100 Newton acting downward, this will cause this point B to move downward, therefore FB is upward and this point A will going to move backward, so this FA is in the forward direction, opposing the direction of motion. So this is uh, the free body diagram. Now let's uh, list down the observations. Uh, we, see, we see that, we notice that the indication of motion is specified because it is slipping. They said, they say that member AB slips at both the ends. So this means that indication of motion is specified at both the ends. And now let's count the unknowns FA, NA, FB, NB and this theta. So we have five unknowns. And how many equations of uh, uh, equilibrium we have? Again, this is just a single rigid body. So we have three equilibrium equations for this body. Submission Fx, Submission Fy and Submission of Moment. So three equilibrium equations are there and two friction equations. One friction equation here, F equals to mu n and the other friction equation here, F equals to mu n. Okay, so we have two friction equations and three equilibrium equations. This makes five equations in total. So we have five unknowns and we have five equations. Three equilibrium equations, two friction equations. So when this is the case, it means that this is, it's a type 2 problem. So it's a type 2 problem. And in type 2 problems, we can use F equals to mu n in our solution. Or during our solution, we can use F equals to mu n. Right? So the next step is to calculate, apply the equations of equilibrium and we have three equations of equilibrium, submission fx 0, submission fy 0, submission of moment 0. 
So looking at the free body diagram, if we use submission fx equals to zero, we will get fa minus nb equals to zero or fa equals to nb. This is showing us that this friction force fa has a magnitude which is equal to the magnitude of this normal reaction nb. Now apply the equation summation of fy equals to zero taking upward direction as positive we have na plus fb and minus this weight of the uh, rod so na plus fb minus weight equals to zero this means that na plus fb equals 200 this is equation number two so we cannot get anything else from equation one and two okay so equation 1 tells us that Fa is equal to Nb, submission Fx equals to 0. Equation 2 submission Fy equals to 0 tells us that Na plus Fb is equal to 100. Okay. So the third equation of uh, equilibrium that we will going to apply here is the equation of moment. So we are summing the moment about point A. Okay. You can also sum the moment about point B it is arbitrary so just one point you have to select that at which point you are going to uh, calculate the moment so let us assume that we are summing moment about point a and i am taking the clockwise direction of moment positive in this problem previously i took anti-clockwise moment to be positive please note that in statics the these directions are arbitrary you can you can use any direction you want to be positive so this time i am taking clockwise direction of moment to be positive so fa and na will not going to create any moment about point o, point a because the line of action is passing from a so we are left with w we are left with fb we are left with nb these three forces will going to create moment about point a so this is a known force and its moment arm is 2 cos theta so this is actually clockwise so w into 2 cos theta is positive i am using a positive sign with it because it is a clockwise moment and now let's calculate the moment of force fb about point a the moment arm is 4 cos of theta and this is anti clockwise so minus sign fb into 4 cos of theta similarly nb its moment arm from point a is 4 sin of theta and this is actually equal to anti clockwise again which is minus nb into 4 sin theta so these are the moments that will be uh, created about point A. So weight will going to create moment about point A. Okay, this FB will going to create moment about point A and this ND will going to create moment about point A. So three forces are creating moment about point A and I have written them with their moment arms and with their respective signs. So here uh, please note that uh, uh, we have to calculate cos of theta oh, sorry we have to calculate theta our end purpose is to calculate theta but this equation cannot be solved further so we have uh, weight to be weight was actually 100 newton so it becomes 200 cos of theta minus fb is unknown to us so it's minus 4 fb cos of theta and nb is also unknown to us right now so it is minus 4 nb sine of theta equals to zero this is equation number three so now recall equation number two so this was equation number two sum of na plus fb equals 200 and now since this is a type 2 problem i can use the friction equations uh, in my solution so these are the friction equations uh, that i'll be using okay please remember that at this point a the friction force is maximum friction force because this point a is at the impending motion point and the maximum friction force at point a is mu a times n a similarly this point is at impending motion point so the friction force acting at point b is again the maximum friction force which is product of mu n which is mu b times n b so these two equations I am using in my solution now. Okay, this is the essence of type two, two, 2 problems. You can use these friction equations in your solution. So Na plus Fb equals 200 and in place of Fb you can write mu b nb 
and in place of n a uh, you can write f a upon n mu a so f a upon mu a is n a from friction equation and f b is mu b into n b okay so so using equation 1 we know that equation 1 on the previous slide uh, it gave us the result that f a is equal to n b so using this this equation f a equals to n b this equation uh, becomes n b upon mu a so this f a this f a is actually equal to n b from equation number one and therefore it, it becomes n b upon mu a plus mu b into n b equals to 100 so i know the value of mu a i know the value of mu mu b okay i can calculate the value of n b from this equation directly mu a is 0.3 mu b is 0.4 Okay, therefore, NB comes out to be 26.81 Newton. So we, we get the value of NB. And now let's consider our equation number three that we that we made on the previous slide using the equation of moment. It was 200 cos theta minus four times uh, FB. And in place of FB, I can write mu b n b okay. and n b sin theta was already there right so this equation comes out to be in terms of n b right so substitute all the values n b is 26.81 we have calculated here n b is 26.81 mu b is 0.4 okay this is this theta this cos theta is still unknown to us but we are able to substitute the value of mu b and n b here similarly uh, if we take this uh, term on the right hand side it becomes plus 4 into positive 4 into 26.81 sin theta because n b is 26.81 sin theta so solve this equation okay you will get a value of uh, you know some constant multiplied by cos theta on the left hand side some constant multiplied by sin theta uh, on the right hand side and then you can convert this into tangent theta because sin theta divided by cos theta is tangent theta which gives you the value of theta so theta is tangent inverse of 1.464 which comes out to be 55.6 so this means that when the angle theta uh, will become 55.6 okay uh, this rod will going to slip simultaneously at both the ends a and b right so this is how you solve uh, or identify uh, 